Well, only in Trump world could we have a Trump lawyer appear tonight on MSNBC with Ari Melber arguing in a typical incoherent defense of a Donald Trump lawyer, arguing in Donald Trump's defense, as all Trump lawyers do, this time against the testimony to a grand jury incriminating Donald Trump that was delivered this week and will be more of it will be delivered tomorrow by a former Trump lawyer. So a Trump lawyer comes on MSNBC tonight to argue against a former Trump lawyer who has described the way Donald Trump paid off Stormy Daniels to cover up their very, very brief sexual encounter, according to Stormy Daniels. And that's where we are tonight. This being Trump world, patience is already always rewarded. And so tonight, we can wonder exactly how much patience will it take to wait for the day when the Trump lawyer who is defending Donald Trump on MSNBC tonight will be the Trump lawyer who is accusing Donald Trump of something criminal in the future, thereby subjecting tonight's Trump lawyer to being attacked by the next Trump lawyer and will this cycle go on for the rest of Donald Trump's life? The cycle of Trump lawyer defends Trump vehemently on TV, followed by Trump lawyer turns against Trump, followed by that Trump lawyer is attacked by a new Trump lawyer who then eventually turns against Trump and so on and so on and so on. The astonishing thing about the Trump lawyer tonight on MSNBC attacking the former Trump lawyer is that now... Both of those lawyers have publicly defended Donald Trump in the Stormy Daniels case. Here is Michael Cohen vehemently defending Donald Trump against the accusation that Donald Trump had a very brief sexual encounter with Stormy Daniels, which then became the subject of $130,000 in hush money payment from Donald Trump to Stormy Daniels. Here's Michael Cohen's statement about that. Neither the Trump organization nor the Trump campaign was a party to the transaction with Ms. Clifford and neither reimbursed me for that the payment, either directly or indirectly. The payment to Ms. Clifford was lawful and was not a campaign contribution or campaign expenditure by anyone. That was Michael Cohen back then. Now, now he's saying exactly the opposite of all of that. Here is tonight's Michael Cohen, whose name is actually Joseph Tecopina, telling Ari Malber the only relevant legal point about the Stormy Daniels case that the lawyer made in tonight's interview. First of all, there's a crucial distinction between um, separating campaign funds from personal funds, right? And on personal fund usage, here's the bright line test, and it, it ends this case, it ends any case uh, regarding Stormy Daniels. If the spending or the fulfillment of a commitment or the expenditure would exist irrespective of the campaign, it's not a campaign law violation. End of story. This would exist irrespective of the campaign. So that's a little preview of Donald Trump's defense when and if he is indicted by a Manhattan grand jury in the Stormy Daniels case, which could happen this week. But it anticipates a crime that the district attorney might not include in the charges against Donald Trump. If the Manhattan district attorney brings charges against Donald Trump, it will certainly involve the misdemeanor charge of falsifying business records to cover up the Stormy Daniels hush money payment. What the Trump lawyer is anticipating is that the district attorney will be able to enhance the charges to a felony by saying that the crime of falsifying business records was committed in conjunction with another crime of violating campaign finance laws of the state of New York, the theory of that charge would be that Donald Trump paid off Stormy Daniels to keep her quiet in the last weeks of the presidential campaign. And because Stormy Daniels' silence had value to Donald Trump's campaign, the $130,000 payment was, in fact, an illegal campaign expenditure. That's the essence of the federal case brought successfully against Michael Cohen for being the conduit for paying off that $130,000. If that charge is filed, we now know the defense Donald Trump will mount, which is, I would, I would have paid off Stormy Daniels even if I were not a presidential candidate. Therefore, it can't be a campaign finance violation. But it can be a tax violation 
in the state of New York because paying off Stormy Daniels was not an actual business expense. And so any deduction that Donald Trump or his company used for that $130,000 would be in violation of New York tax law. That potential violation was not mentioned by Donald Trump's lawyer tonight. Whenever you watch a lawyer defending Donald Trump on TV, you always have to wonder, how long? How long before the lawyer turns against Donald Trump? How long before the lawyer is convicted of crimes involving Donald Trump? How long before the lawyer has a law license suspended because of the work done for Donald Trump? Because all of those things have happened to Trump lawyers. And those things are still happening to Trump lawyers. A group of lawyers led by former Massachusetts Attorney General Scott Harshbarger has filed a 22-page complaint against Stefan Passantino, who they allege committed several crimes, including subornation of perjury, obstruction of justice, witness tampering, and bribery, while he was representing January 6th committee witness Cassie Hutchinson, while really working for Donald Trump. The 22-page complaint to the Office of Disciplinary Counsel in Washington, D.C. says, it is a testament to Ms. Hutchinson's character that she overcame Mr. Passantino's pervasive misconduct and testified truthfully, becoming perhaps the key witness before the committee. Her service to the interests of American democracy and the rule of law cannot be overstated. At the same time, Mr. Passantino's efforts to obstruct and interfere with her contribution to the legislative and historical record cannot be rationalized, dismissed, or ignored if our professional code of ethics is to serve its critical purposes. In her testimony, after changing lawyers, Cassidy Hutchinson testified that Stefan Passantino repeatedly encouraged her to forget things in the course of her interviews with the committee, saying, quote, Stefan never told me to lie. He specifically told me, I don't want you to perjure yourself, but I don't recall isn't perjury. They don't know what you can and can't recall. In another instance, Cassie Hutchinson asks him, quote, but if I do recall something, but not every little detail, Stefan, can I still say I don't recall? And he said, yes. In what the lawyers in the complaint deem as evidence of bribery, Stefan Passantino re reiterated to Cassie Hutchinson that she would be taken care of by Trump world, offering her employment in exchange for favorable testimony. We're going to get you a really good job in Trump world. You don't need to apply other places. We're going to get you taken care of. We want to keep you in the family. Stefan Passantino refused to disclose to Cassidy Hutchinson, his client, who was paying for her legal fees when she asked him that. Would you mind letting me know where the funding for this is coming from? I want to thank them. I want to thank whoever it is because I'm just trying to kind of like figure things out. And he said, if you want to know at the end, we'll let you know. But we're not telling people where funding is coming from right now. Don't worry. We're taking care of you. Like, you're never going to get a bill for this. So if that's what you're worried about, Cassidy Hutchinson did not want a lawyer from Trump world. Explained it to her mother this way. Quote, I was like, no, I'm completely indebted to these people. And I was like, and they will ruin my life, mom, if I do anything that they don't want me to do. And how scared she was. She told her mother how scared she was to be indebted to the Trump people when her family could not help her out financially. And it wasn't just that I had Stefan sitting next to me. It was almost like I felt like I had Trump looking over my shoulder because I knew in some fashion it would get back to him if I said anything that he would find disloyal. And the prospect of that genuinely scared me. You know, I'd seen this world ruin people's lives or try to ruin people's careers. I'd seen how vicious they can be. The complaint describes the many ways that Stefan Passantino obstructed justice when it came to this client. 
Mr. Pasentino did not just try to get Ms. Hutchinson to make false statements and misleading omissions. He also tried to get her to resist a third subpoena or to state that she would be an unwilling witness and discouraged her from preparing for her testimony by reviewing her calendar or other documents. Cassidy Hutchinson told the committee that her breaking point with Stefan Pasantino was when he advised her to stop speaking to the committee and risk being in contempt of Congress. Quote, contempt is a small risk, but running to the right is better for you. I look, I look as Fox News, Trump world Republicans, I'm going to use air quotes around Republicans are going to defend you. They're going to blast the committee for holding you in contempt if they do that. He said, that's enough of a reason for the committee to not hold you in contempt because they're going to get such bad press over it. And I kept reiterating to him, but Stefan, if they do prosecute me, I theoretically could go to prison, right? And he said, Cassidy, DOJ will not prosecute you over being held in contempt when you've already given the committee so much. You need to trust me on this. This is the best option for you. And I said, this is still on the phone. Stefan, I really don't want to gamble with this. He said, well, just keep giving it some thought. I'll talk with some people too, but we really think this is what's best for you, Cass. Like, this needs to end at some point, and I think it just needs to end now. And in my mind, thought, this does need to end now, this being our attorney-client relationship. The lawyer's complaint says, the Office of Disciplinary Counsel should promptly initiate an investigation of Mr. Pasantino's conduct and, if the facts described above are confirmed, seek his disbarment.